So, and I definitely have some notes on this, and I want to get into this. You started talking about writing. When did okay? It was in college you started writing, right? Poetry and things like that. Why do you think you chose writing as an outlet, or do, would you even describe it as an outlet? Yes. Okay. So why do you think you chose writing, and how long after you started? Because you mentioned kind of you you realized the lack of symmetry with your life or maybe your true life like you you know it was a little shallow you know maybe it wasn't fully like all right this is actually how i feel so yeah when when did you think that okay or why did you think that that was going to be a good outlet and then what do you think or how long what was that timeline until you kind of realize you know you can make that that real life connection between this is what i'm writing and this is how i'm feeling you know and i threw a lot at you right now so i would say that when i was younger sports were my outlet. Okay. And, you know, just the idea of, of driving my body hard and running and pounding mm-hmm. and getting good at sports. But I was also good at school. And it was all, they were all things that I could do to take my mind off of anything else. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to feel if I was just playing sports and getting good at that or, or doing my schoolwork and getting good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I graduated with a a writing major, but I first was interested in psychology. So I think when psychology became boring in college, I looked for (laughs) another, like, who am I? What am I going to be? What can I do? Mm -hmm. Everything just was kind of boring. And I enjoyed writing. My writing classes in English, I was good at it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, let me get my teaching credential. I'll teach for five years, I'll go back to grad school, and then I'll do what I'm really supposed to do with my life. Hmm. And I did go to grad school five years later, and I got my MFA in creative writing and my master's in English literature. Nice. And usually all you can do with that is teach. Sure. Or write. So (laughs) it turned out that I was already doing what I was supposed to be doing with the rest of my life. But the writing thing took precedence because I was always coming back to it. And it wasn't Hmm. a... You know, you asked at what point did I realize it was going to be um, helping me process or when the emotions kind of came into it. Sure. I think I, I journaled a lot and I wrote things that just kind of came to me. A lot of it was trying to process my childhood and my biological mother's illness. Mm-hmm. And the more I wrote and the more I worked with other writers and we did read and critiques and the more I learned about good writing, I realized I needed to step up my game. And so my writing has evolved because of that, just a, in the natural course of things, hmm. of years of doing it. So um, you know, every once in a while, I'll read something that I wrote years ago, and it doesn't sound like what I wrote, but it sounds really good. And I'll say to myself, did I write that? <laughs> like, why can't it come out like that all the time? Because it's such a, it's like the most mundane job right to sit and write and it's it's Mm -hmm. rudimentary you've got your pen and your paper and you just you know carve out some words and then they become something sure and I think I I tried to really capture the feeling and the emotion of the experiences I had and that became cathartic for me and became Hmm. healing because I processed it on paper and now it's it's still in me I still know my story but it's over there on paper, sure. so it's I don't have to carry it, and it's not as heavy, and that became really interesting for me to experience. Interesting. Would you say it almost forced you to reflect or reflect deeper? Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've i been thinking about that myself, actually, i say the last two weeks where I've been really trying. I mean, I've been trying to do it for a while, but it's just kind of been fresh on my mind of thinking about this aspect um, bringing it into my own life, right? I do this show and blah, blah, blah. Um, and you know, I have guests on like yourself where it's like, okay, cool. You got a book out. So it's totally going to be about you. And then there's <laughs> which is nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm happy that you're here, but then there's some where it's just, I need the outlet of the podcast of just, I'm going to invite three friends over and what do I have written down? Mm-hmm. And it's just going to be talking about life. You know what I mean? And so I'll literally just sit down with the calendar on my phone and just go, okay, what's happened? In my life. Okay, so my truck's been stolen. Okay, I went to a wedding and uh, a woman told me that (laughs) some really weird stuff that I'll talk about on a podcast soon. (laughs) But you know what I mean? I'll just sit down and it forces me to reflect. So the fact, and I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is kind of what I'm hearing. You kind of realize that you like to write 
and then you wanted to go, and then you kind of realize. I'm just trying to think of the the timeline here. So you you realize you like to write, and then you kind of realize like, oh, I should be going deeper, and then that forced you to kind of think about you know certain things and really reflect, and then now the writing even got that much more addicting, addictive mm-hmm. for you, I would imagine, right? So looking, that was in your twenties. Where does writing for you now? I mean, here you are. You have this book. I definitely want to get back to your book because that's want that to shine for this episode. (laughs) You have this new book. Um, You know, you said you started it in 2004. How do you think your, uh, and this is kind of a broad paint stroke question, but how do you think your view on writing has changed from, you know, here we are talking about your 20s and then here, you know, this much time has passed and now you have your actual own book coming out. Is your idea of writing similar to when you were in your 20s or how has that evolved? And these are tough questions. This is a tough question. Yeah. Before when I wrote, it, I wasn't trying to do anything or be anything. Maybe I was trying to write a poem for class or write a story, and I hoped that my classmates and my teacher would respond favorably. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that kind of aspect of creating something that you're going to show somebody and mm-hmm. getting excited for their feedback. So that's the same, you know, and I have writer friends who are the same, that they'll tell me that they've written a story or a poem. Do I want to see it? You know, mm-hmm. they're just we're just hungry for someone to say, you know, oh, I like what you did. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to say, look what I did. See? And there's kind of Mm -hmm. a childish aspect of it. It's like when you're little and you're like, mom, mom, look, watch me. Look, mom. And so it's kind of grown into this thing of if I think that I need to write because the story is in me and I need to tell it or poems just come out of me and I need to write them down. Mm -hmm. um, How does that transfer over to something that becomes a book right right hard work effort really intentional writing and crafting and so the way I look at it now is more like an art rather than just scribbling some things down on the page that I don't even have in any order that I can't even find if they're on literal pages or in files on my computer Mm -hmm. versus something that now I've intentionally put together it's ordered a certain way i've revised it i've gone over it a million times right and other people are saying wow this is good Mm -hmm. and so it's kind of the same but just at a different level and on a deeper level Mm -hmm. Um, and it's addictive like we were talking about earlier it's something that i feel like i'm happiest when i'm writing something that i know is meaningful to me that i think is good that might have meaning for others Mm mm-hmm well, I've seen the reviews that you've been posting. Uh, people are loving your book, all right, which, I, you know, I don't care what anybody says. That feels great. It does. You know what I mean? You, you've worked on it for so long. It does. And then people say that they love what you've done. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's got to feel so good. It does. I mean, I know you're trying to underplay it, but I know the second you leave, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, it feels so great. You know what I mean? Well, uh, um, <laughs> my uncle, this was years and years ago when... I think I was in college and told him that I was majoring in writing. I changed my major mm-hmm. and wanted to be a writer. And he goes, oh, a dreamer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, yeah, I'm a dreamer and I'm a doer. <laughs> 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 so it's kind of sweet to, to see all those years of hard work and people probably not believing that I was ever going to finish this book because sure. they knew I was writing it and I was always writing it. Mm-hmm. But I could totally relate. Episode comes out every week. (laughs) Not very many people watch it, but here we are. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out the Standing Still podcast, both here on YouTube and wherever else you listen to podcasts.